Dinesh D'Souza, welcome to Smart Life. Good to have you. Hey, good to be on the show. I want to talk a lot about your latest book and movie, but first, I want to go back to your movie 2016 for just a moment. This is where I learned the term from you, Obama's America. Uh, you helped tell the untold story of Barack Obama, his childhood, his family, and I learned a lot from that movie. The other night on Lou Dobbs, as you saw, I mentioned that I really thought that Perhaps the reason, psychologically, that Obama could relate so well to uh, this uh, uh, Bergdahl that he released, and the reason maybe he chose to release him for these five dangerous terrorists in lieu of someone like Andrew Tan Marisi or someone in, in another, uh, another country in danger, might be because he relates to being the son of an anti-colonialist based on the remarks that happened on the White House lawn. Had that occurred to you as well? Yeah, and I would go a little, I would go even further than that by saying that I don't think he just relates to Bergdahl. I think he also relates to the Taliban guys. Now, this may seem a little bit shocking to say that the president of the United States, who's elected to defend our interests, would relate to somebody who is uh, in a shooting war against America. Now, uh, not for a moment would I suggest Obama, you know, hates America or that he's a traitor. No. But if you see America as the bad guy in the world, and we know from Obama's apology tour and innumerable statements, he thinks that America is an oppre has been an oppressive force in the world. So if that's your premise, if we're the evil empire, then it follows that people in Iraq or Afghanistan who are fighting against us are to some degree freedom fighters. They're fighting to liberate their own country from us, and Obama sympathizes with that. So... Uh, the anti-colonial sentiment is one that has become pro-third world and anti-American because America is identified with the colonial powers like the British, like the French, who went and occupied these countries all over the world. Dinesh, what do you make of the comments by the father on the White House lawn uh, praising Allah? Some say it was claiming the White House for Islam. What do you say? Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I, I don't know so much about the father. My guess is that he might have just been a hapless, misguided fellow who's trying to, you know, um, be, become a little bit sycophantic toward the guys who, after all, are holding his son in, in captivity. My eyes have been firmly fixed on Obama because you have to realize in this situation, everybody seems to know what they're doing. Everyone has a very definite motive except the president. Everyone is stepping back and going, why would he do this? Even the liberals are, why would he do this? Mm -hmm. And it's so tempting to believe that Obama is a buffoon, he's a fool, he doesn't know what's going on, and that leads to all these conservative lectures in which we're instructing him where the Crimea is and reminding him that Putin used to be a KGB guy or that the Taliban don't wish us well. But look, Obama gets a daily briefing. He knows all this. Uh, he's not Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was, in fact, a buffoon. But Obama isn't. So I think here is a case where we're just misunderstanding the man in the White House and not realizing he has a very different view of America, very different feeling for America than most Americans, Republican or Democrat. So is that feeling that he has for America that you talk about, this anti-colonialist orientation, is it, um, is it dangerous, I guess, is part A of my question, and is it sane, part B of my question? Well, it's very dangerous for, dangerous for those of us who believe that America is a force for good in the world, because we have a guy in the White House who's trying to shrink America. Now, he's trying to shrink America because he thinks it would be better for the world if China was more powerful and Brazil and Russia and India. But people like me who have grown up in those parts of the world know that if, the Amer if America shrinks, the waterways of the world in which most of the commerce of the world moves today and is protected by the U.S. Navy, uh, that commerce will become more precarious. And wars are more likely to break out, and there will be jostling power. So Obama could not be more wrong, but what he's doing, he's doing in the name of global justice. I want to get to, of course, uh, all the exciting things happening. The movie, America, set to come out in theaters on July 2nd. What do we have to look forward to from you this time, Dinesh? Well, the movie, I'm telling you, is, is a shocker. And, and if you're a liberal, you might want to breathe deeply before you go in because <laughs> you might come out uh, you know, with uh, constipated at the very least, but certainly uh, needing shock treatment. Because what's happened is we've, we've spun this progressive narrative of America. And it's a narrative of American oppression. 
I call it the shaming of America. Hmm. We were the bad guys ever since we took the country from the Indians, and then slavery, and then segregation, then we stole half of Mexico, and capitalism deprives people of their fair share, and on and on it goes. Well, this is actually a bogus reading of American history. The left has sort of gone through American history, selected the 11 facts that support their account, and doctored them together, and left a whole bunch of inconvenient facts out. So part of what we do in the film, I call it hidden history, and it's like, oh, yeah, well, what about this? And boom, we drop in new information that's available, that's n known, but that is left out of our textbooks because it doesn't fit the progressive morality tale. That's just one of the sort of delicious new things that you can expect in this film. Hmm. And uh, what are you hearing so far in terms of uh, folks who uh, know about the movie or have seen uh, previews of the movie? The reaction has been actually just overwhelming. I mean, we've had, it was somewhat, you know, when people saw 2016, I think as it came out of nowhere, typically, typically the reaction in the theater, uh, and this is all over the country, not just in red America, in New York City and L.A. just as much as in Dallas. When the movie ended, there's like a stunned silence, and then the whole audience yeah. stands up and applauds. Yes. Um, and that, you know, you know how rarely that happens in movies. Right. And so we're getting the same reaction with the America film. Just people are blown away. And then as the credits roll, they just are overwhelmed and they stand up and they applaud. Well, I was honored to get to watch your first movie with you right there in the room with me. I'll hope that I get to see this one with you as well. But if not, be certain that we'll be talking a lot about it. Dinesh D'Souza, thank you so much for being with us today. Best of luck on your movie, even though I know you won't need it. Thank you for all you do for this country. I really appreciate it. And if I may say, I have a book out now, also called America, and it's sort of the intellectual spine of the movie. So you can get a little intellectual preview of the movie by getting the book. Awesome. Thanks, Dinesh.